The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer to peer. Hi, buddy. How's buddy, it going? What's up, man? Hey. Happy early morning. Happy early. I know. Happy early uh, morning. <laughs> we're here in Puerto Rico. I know. But it's Sorry. Thank you. Appreciate waking up early. <laughs> it's cloudy and rainy, though. I know. Oh, no. It's yeah. kind of. Yeah. We've gotten some sun though. Yeah, we've been trying to wake up early to, but yeah, there's like, a, yeah, it's been yeah. raining yesterday all since we got here basically. Yeah. So it's all good. We're in Puerto Rico. Swimming every day. Uh, just, I mean, we wanted to go to the beach, so I guess we'll probably visit some family, if anything, if it's still boring all day long. <laughs> I'm just swimming, swimming in the ocean every day is is my is my, is my plan, my daily plan. Man, but yeah, all good, man. Nice How you doing? I've been good. Just uh, waiting for this market to break out, yawning every day, just bored, waiting for some action to happen, but everything is just flat <laughs> sideways. Well, you, you told us to keep an eye on gold last week, right? And I think that that's kind of been the story of the week. So you were, you were yeah. on top of that. Yeah, that probably, so. is, probably is the main one. Yeah, I, I really meant to get to it last week. And then at the last second, I was like, oh, crap, I forgot about it. But I kind of felt like we were Maybe in a little bit of a hurry, anyway. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to hold things up. No, so. it was good. It was good. You dropped a little hint, and then you know people got a taste of it, and then I saw gold. Did you end up? Um, <laughs> did you end up buying any? I remember you said that you were that you were thinking about getting some, or some more. Oh, the gold backs. Oh no, I bought I bought gold backs, but you know only uh, um, in person when we saw the gold back guy. It was like. Oh, you know, uh, okay. Yeah, it wasn't just, it was just like, for fun, not really so much. Yeah, investment. yeah, it wasn't like a, a large uh, investment. I'm out. Yeah, we'll I mean, what, <laughs> what what would you recommend for those that are interested in you know diversifying into gold? What do you recommend is the way of going about doing? It? Actually, holding real gold. But what, what do you recommend? So um, I think that it's important to hold a little bit of physical gold. But I do tend to think that libertarians, anarchists tend to over exaggerate how much you should hold. My thinking is that you want to hold about five to 10 percent in self-custody gold at the places that you um, the places that you live. So if you or the places that you have roots. So, for example, I have roots in Texas. I have some gold over with my family there. I hold some gold here in Mexico. Um, not too much, but, um, you know, like five to 10 percent of your net worth. Because really what it is, it's insurance against monetary upheaval. The problem is that you're going to pay 2 to 5% on the spot price for both the buy and the sell. So if you buy physical gold, it goes up and then you sell it. You've already lost 5 to 10% um, you know, after you consider both sides of that trade. So really, you just want to, you want to accumulate it. You want to hold it for years. You don't really want to trade it. And then if you think that gold is going to catch a bid or that gold's a safe place to be and, and you want to get yourself more exposed, I think that um, having a gold bullion vault is a great way to um, to not only get that exposure, but also to sort of diversify your your geopolitical risk. So, for example, let's suppose you hold a bunch of gold at home. Someone gets wind of that, you know, you get wrench attacked or whatever, or maybe the government decides to seize gold again. If you have an international bullion account, um, that might save your ass, right? You might you might have a bunch of gold in that account, and you might still have access to that even after you get attacked in some kind of way physically at home. So, um, you know, I mean, I know it's not self-custody and I know a lot of people are, you know, might uh, might disagree with me there. But personally, that's that's what I think is a good way to hold gold. And then finally, like if you really think gold is about to catch a bid, kind of like last week I was saying, hey, this thing might be about to break out. If you have a, a stock portfolio or, if, you know, if you have a Fidelity account or something like that, you could just buy GLD on the uh, on the stock market and and try and catch gold that way. And you're basically going to pay no spread there. Now, of course, there's going to be some fakery like there was in um, uh, when the whole crash happened in March 2020. And like, for example, silver dropped to like twelve dollars, but you couldn't pick up physical silver for twelve dollars anywhere. It was like twenty, twenty five dollars. So, um, you know, that's kind of the risk there of, of holding the paper asset on the on the regular financial markets. But um, those are all different ways to get exposure to gold that uh, that I think are can be useful in different contexts. So hold hold like five, 10 percent actual self custody uh, but if you're if you're looking to trade uh by the uh the actual gold uh securities right yeah the other saying? thing that's really convenient too is um one thing i did at the top of the market in 2021 
is you can buy physical gold in a bullion vault for crypto. Um, they don't take Monero. I asked them, I was like, hey, would you guys take Monero? And they said it didn't have enough liquidity. So um, I sold them, I don't know, Bitcoin or something. Uh, but yeah, there's a couple of bullion vaults out there and they're audited, they're reputable. Um, they're, you know, and you can buy and sell metals for crypto. So like whenever I think that the market is, you know, we're on the cusp of a new, of a new bull market, I'll probably sell that gold and just go straight back to crypto. Um, you know, mm -hmm. probably they'll probably still won't have Monero by that point. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get Bitcoin and then I'll use BISC or something like that. What do you use for that? What gold vaults uh, are accepting crypto that you know of? The one the one that I know of is Bullion Vault um, or I'm sorry, Bullion, Bullion Star. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, BullionStar.com. Uh, they're a Singapore vault. And uh, yeah, they're they're pretty top quality. They've always been responsive. Um, you know, they get audited. Is there like a KYC, like KYC process? With that? They did. Yeah, I had to send them my passport to sign up and originally buy. There wasn't, but I don't know. Maybe I can't remember. I lost my password or, or something. They wanted my passport, so so they know who I am. Oh shit. Yeah. But you think potentially there's to sign up and buy. You don't. You don't need KYC. I didn't at first. It was just like sign up and I, I bet you now though, like that was years ago. That was like back in 2016. Right. Um, right. So maybe okay. maybe now it's more, you know, they've, they've really expanded the regulations in that regard. Very cool. Uh, awesome, man. Yeah, no, we, I just bought like a few hundred dollars worth of gold, box, gold backs uh, like a couple of weeks, which I guess was good timing. <laughs> it was like before, before the pump. Um, but yeah, it wasn't much. Cool. I'm all, but people, all Monero. people actually spend that stuff in um, New Hampshire, don't they? Yeah, they do in New Hampshire and Utah. Uh, people, Utah. Goldbacks are catching on. I think it has a market cap of like 40 mil right now. There's like 40 mil worth of goldbacks that are out there circulating, which is, you huh. know, it's growing. Like, they really can't even keep up with demand. I was talking to the guys because, you know, it's it's quite the process with creating the goldbacks. Um, but there seems to be high demand and they're growing fast. Just intuitively, cool. it seems like something that could catch on really quickly, especially like with the social environment that's out there. There's so many people like regular people. The you know Fox News is talking about how the dollar might get dethroned and everyone's worried about it. So if you've got all these people, these Republicans talking about that, I mean, you could probably go to almost any farmer's market and start introducing goldbacks. And I bet you a lot of those guys would be would be interested. Yeah, I mean, what's what's uh, what's really cool about it is it gets everything you were talking about, right? So you get that, um, you know, you get gold as an investment, right? But then you actually can use it for as a currency, right? You're you're not trying to, you know, whittle away a flick of gold off <laughs> off your <laughs> your little nugget there. You you could actually spend it in in kind of dollar form. It's, so it's it's very cool. It adds like a it turns gold into uh, a spendable currency in addition to being a store of value, which is, which is really cool. Think, that would be yeah, crazy if after all this time, like hundreds of years, like the, the or really the last hundred years of the Federal Reserve, the answer to making gold a currency again was to put it in bill form and to make it yeah. like a nice, beautiful, you know, bill out of it. Right. Simple as that. With plastic. Simple as that. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see what kind of uh, regulations they end up face. I mean, I don't know. They've been managed to navigate it pretty well. I don't, I don't, I don't know how you know, but I don't know if it ends yeah, up I guess becoming that's, an issue. I hadn't thought of that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, is that that's um? Other... Yeah, there's the whole background with the other guys that tried to do something similar, but I don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe they are avoiding all the problems. Yeah, or they're, maybe they're crypto smart has the regulators. <laughs> maybe crypto has the regulators distracted enough that they just like goldbacks can fly under the radar for a while. Yeah, yeah, maybe until it gets big enough. Yeah, uh, and then if it does, you know, like it can't get rug pulled. You you always have your 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 gold in your goldbacks. You know what I'm saying? So like, even if it got shut down, it's not like your your goldbacks become worthless. Theoretically, you know, they 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 still have value. Yeah. Um. But yeah, cool, man. Take Let's take a look at Monero and see. I tweeted the other day. I said, hey, you know, it's time. This chart looks to me like it's it's ready to break. It wants to break. Whenever, if if and when crypto and everything else breaks out, this chart will break with it. Um, 
the thing that um, I've kind of got this dichotomy going on right now that's that's developed. So my problem is that um, the charts all still look good. Everything I'm looking at looks fine. Everything looks like it's kind of pumping a little bit and maybe like one by one, like we saw ETH kind of pump a little bit, but Bitcoin didn't. And we saw a couple shit coins here and there pump. So like things look like they want to go. But one thing that's bothering me about the market in general right now is that the stock market broke its resistance levels. Like it very clearly broke some very significant resistance. And um, so, for example, let's take a look at the NASDAQ. This was on Friday last week. We talked about this, right, where we basically broke out of this line, this uh, sort of capping line right here. And, um, you know, we I wanted to see better follow through this week. But at the same time, it's not as big a deal as, as you might think, because, um, you know, we're basically we're coming up on this channel right here. I was kind of thinking we'd probably poke above that before coming back down. But at any rate, the week ended just slightly down for the NASDAQ and I think just slightly positive for the S&P. But um I guess technically the S&P hasn't exactly broken out uh, from its um, this sort of like capping line right there. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. No, I guess that's right. Oh, I'm on the weekly. That's why. Here we go. Let's go to the four hour. Okay. Yeah, that's better. So um, anyways, but the, uh, but the NASDAQ did break out and then the SSE composite, which is the Shanghai, uh, it's like China stocks basically. Um, they're doing pretty well also. They, they kind of broke out of their sort of uh, horizontal resistance. And the Dixie was down, like the, the dollar index dropped. So there was all this, there was every reason for Bitcoin, cryptocurrency in general to break out. Um, and, and it didn't. So that kind of bothered me. I said, you know, so for example, here's the dollar index. Um, this is the daily. Let's go to the four hour. Yeah, so overall, like the dollar index was down. Um, there is, all right, there's Friday. So the week dollar index last week on Friday ended up here. And then pretty much the entire week, the dollar index was down, but crypto failed to break out. So that kind of bothers me because it looked to me like we had every reason for crypto to break these resistances um, and to go up, but it didn't. So, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean like the charts all still, look, they look good to me. Like that doesn't mean that we can't go up, that we can't break it next week or next month even. Um, right now, what we're seeing is significant drop off in the volatility, which means that a very big move is setting up. So that could be a big move to the upside. That could be a big move to the downside. Everything I look at in these charts basically says that this should be a big move to the upside. But, um, you know, after all this time here, it's been three months, almost four months now. And we're sort of just like grinding higher. There's this uh, sort of capping grind line. And, um, you know, you really expect that we, we in a truly bullish scenario, when things really are bullish, you break rising resistance to the upside. And there was really every reason right here where we could have broken. There was every reason here where we could have also broken that and we didn't. So um, that's kind of like both the contrary and, hey, we might go down case and the, the, hey, we might go up case. I do tend to think that this is probably just um, consolidation, volatility is dropping off. Um, some of these other charts that I look at, um, they're like statistical maps, if you will. Um, Y'all have kind of got a couple uh, views at them occasionally on accident. Um, I'll tell you all about that some other time. But uh, anyways, so Monero's sitting here at, uh, you know, it's basically its final boss bull market, uh, sorry, bear market resistance here. And I really, I mean, this is exactly what a chart looks like that's supposed to break to the upside. So, you know, I mean, barring any like catastrophic events or anything crazy that, that should break to the upside. Hypothetically, you could see that this chart, um, these lines don't really cross until May. So hypothetically, it could take until May for this thing to break. Um, like, I don't know, let's suppose some, some kind of news comes out that's not good for the crypto industry, you know, like they hit Binance with an injunction, you know, I mean, I don't know if they hit Binance with an injunction, Monero should just, just go straight up back to 500. <laughs> um, but, you know, like let's suppose some bad news comes out, right? Things might drop back down here, but I mean, this chart to me, it's, it should break to the upside. It has every reason to break to the upside. I don't think it's going to break down. Um, that's like the probabilities would, would put it very high um, to, to go to the upside there. Uh, we can look at the uh, XMR BTC ratio, and on the lower time frame, uh, like just in the past, uh, since the end of March, we've kind of had this sideways triangle where the again the volatility has been dropping off. Uh, common theme here. We we did break this as of last night. We uh, convincingly broke that. Let's take a look at the daily. Yeah, we, we still need to confirm this thing, but um, as of today, we've broken sort of this small structure right here. So that's. I always kind of look at the XMR BTC ratio as kind of like 
a counterwind or a counter, uh, an inverse chart to what the rest of crypto is going to do. So when when the ratio on Bitcoin is going, uh, sorry, when the ratio on XMR BTC is going down, it seems like the crypto markets tend to go up and then vice versa, right? This is this is the bear market where XMR BTC performed really well. So the fact that this broke to the upside might be kind of a point in favor of a little bit more downside in crypto. Um, it is very possible that, in fact, I expect that when this volatility decides it wants to break to one side or the other, one thing that almost always happens is shit just like it'll break down, it'll spike down and everyone thinks it's going to crash and it'll jump right back up and then go to the opposite side. They do that to clear out the leverage longs, right? Like if you're a market maker and you don't want to share your profits with anyone else that's leveraged long and you know that everyone stops or probably somewhere in this area, you might just like shove the market all the way down here and then just stop and reverse on a dime for no reason and then go straight back up. So I do expect that it's very likely that whichever direction the market is going to break, it's probably going to fake out to the wrong side first. That's just usually how that stuff happens. Um, let's take a look at the relative cryptocurrency coin performance. Um, yeah, dog had its little pump because Elon, <laughs> I'm sure y'all have seen this already, but let's, let's just take a look at it. Uh, let's add a tab here and go to Twitter. Oh, Elon Musk. Oh, did he, did he put the tweet logo back to the birdie? He changed this to uh, he changed that to the dog the Dogecoin logo. I, I don't know. Let me check. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, <laughs> no, he, he changed it back. That that whole thing just looks so scammy to me. Like, so okay. Let's just go to the let's go to the Doge chart here. This is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, Doge USD. Elon saving the world the Doge. My God, like. It was so scammy. Okay, so what happened was this green candle right here. Actually, let's go down to the 15 minute. 15 minute candles. Okay. This pump started well before the news got out. And I think it's, and I, I haven't confirmed this, but I think the pump started before he actually changed the logo. Like these first two oh, green really? candles in the first 30 minutes. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I, I could be wrong about that, but like, I couldn't find any tweets talking about this. I couldn't find anything covering this until 30 minutes after the pump started. So it almost looked to me like they took the elevator up and then it took the stairs down and it basically gave back all of the gains that it originally made. So it's like when that happens, like the XRP chart looks like this. You'll have a week where it just pumps by insane amounts and then it takes the stairs down slowly, slowly, slowly. And everyone thinks like at every, you know, every new place like, oh, hey, it just dropped. We're about to do this, you know, and um yeah every pe like people try and get in the market at every new step down thinking that they found the bottom and it's just i don't like maybe elon had nothing to do with that twitter's a big company maybe there was some inside information somebody else knew about it uh but it just seemed kind of scammy to me and oh that was that was another reason why i thought well hey there's every reason why the markets the crypto markets should pump with the whole dogecoin thing you know that's right. like big news everyone's gonna say well elon's gonna accept dogecoin for blue check marks now and and uh, it, there was just no follow through. At no point did it follow through. It just went down. So that was that was special. So um, yeah, I, I I'm still like it, we could still go up. It, it, maybe the markets just need more time to consolidate. Uh, oh, I have a new theory on on why we saw Binance and these huge positive price divergences. Um, I wonder since they sued CZ. And it seems like there's kind of a, you know, a new mentality, a new administration. I used to say CZ's an insider, you know, he's friends with Bloomberg and, and maybe that's all true, but it does seem like perhaps with the Biden administration, there might be like a true hatred of crypto. I, I'm kind of getting this feeling that there might be like this dichotomy between sort of two sides where, I mean, it would make sense left versus right, but you kind of got like the banker bros, the insiders, they like Ethereum, they've got their stable coins, BlackRock, et cetera. You know, they, they like to like pump and dump markets. They like 2008 kind of stuff. They can get leverage and, and then the market's going to crash, but they know so they get out. Like there's that side. And then there's kind of like the leftist side that just hates crypto. Like it's it's not even about like there's no innovation there. They just hate the idea that that anything could potentially compete with the government's dominance of money. And so I think that's kind of like that seems to be the case with Chokepoint 2.0. That's like they're revealing their mentality. So it could be that 
CZ is legitimately worried that he might be totally screwed. Um, he, he might be saying to himself, okay, like I'm getting sued here. What if they issue an, an injunction against Binance? I better get some funds off. And what am I going to do? I'm going to go into Monero, right? Because it's fungible. He can, he could probably dump that in many places without it being linked to him. If anyone knows and has seen the problems of the non-fungibility of, you know, of, of the crimes that they do, it, it would be CZ. So maybe this is him acquiring a backup plan in case he actually gets totally fucked. Now, Ooh, that's, I like that rumor. Oh, yeah, let's, let's, yeah, yeah, let's everyone. <laughs> everyone on Twitter seemed to like that rumor as well. I posted it, and it got yeah. everyone was was pretty stoked about that. So, yeah, it's, it's for the record. That's completely like a wacky tinfoil conspiracy theory idea of mine. I have absolutely no evidence for it other than this chart. Um, but it, it was kind of weird to see that and and not to see any price response. And then uh, I, I don't know. So maybe it is CZ acquiring his backup plan. Maybe maybe he becomes um, a friend of Monero eventually. He'll probably dump that Monero anyways, though, later on once he, you know, try and find some other. Maybe, well, at some point, these conspiracy theories are going to come true, right? Like, yeah, maybe this isn't the case, but Monero's sitting here. It's waiting, right? And and all roads lead to it, man. People, people are waking up. So you have to imagine that these really smart guys that are in crypto are at least hedging a little bit into it, right? Because they, they've been studying this as well, if not better than most um they they see how this is all going to play out so yeah this one might be a, a little far fetched but eventually it's it's things like this will come to fruition i believe yeah i mean you, you have to think that some of them like maybe not all of them like okay maybe the Barry Silberts of the world and maybe some of the deep insiders think to themselves well i've got i don't need monero i i'm i'm part of the system right I, i'm approved um but maybe Maybe all the events that are happening here for the past year uh, are, are making people think twice. Maybe some of the crypto leaders will get their head screwed on better and say, you know what? Maybe it is a good idea to, to at least hedge, like you said, uh, acquire some position there. Um, and for those that aren't aware, the uh, the CFTC sued finance for, um, I don't know, some kind of like commodities fraud stuff. Um, the... Um, there's like something like 800 complaints with the uh, the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, where people are saying, hey, Binance froze my funds. They won't let them go. Um, you know, I have a personal friend that had a decent chunk of money frozen up by Binance and Binance wouldn't do anything. They just dragged their feet for, I don't know, it was like two months. And finally, maybe it's three months, he got a lawyer and the lawyer sent them a demand letter. And what do you know, within like seven days, those funds were released. So, uh, but Binance does this all the time. Like, this is what they do. So, um, yeah, he's being sued by the CFTC. And there's the thing is that that's important for us right here in the immediate term. There's talks about an injunction. So an injunction from the judge would basically restrict Binance from doing certain activities. They could potentially even restrict them from operating at all. So that kind of thing would be very negative for price for crypto in the immediate term if it does happen. I'm not saying that it will. And um, that's that's not necessarily the most likely thing, but it, but it could. It definitely could happen because I think um, I think the CFTC... I can't remember if I read this or if I didn't, but I think they are going to file an injunction to try and prevent Binance from operating or from doing certain things. So um, other than that, if the judge denies an injunction and Binance can continue operating, then we'll probably, you know, this kind of lawsuit will take a year, two years to really, um, you know, to, to really like progress through the court system. Um, so yeah, there's there's that. And I think the FTX lawsuit starts pretty soon as well. Let's see here. Um, I think that's about all I have for you guys. Oh, we, we should look at gold. We almost forgot about gold again. How could I do that? Uh, okay, here's gold spot. Uh, gold is like, it's just such a long-term chart. I always, we have to start from the, the very zoomed out view. So this is the monthly. Um, it's a little bit messy. Chart looks a little messy from here, but you can see it's basically um, a rising triangle. Like you almost might want to call this a wedge because this line here is upsloping just a little bit, but um, yeah, I mean, rising triangle, rising wedge, whatever. This is at the moment a, a very bullish structure. So um, we're, let's go down to the daily now. So now you can see, hopefully some of these lines make a bit more sense. Um, this line right here was kind of like our bear market line last year. That broke with, uh, as, as price started coming up. Uh, let's go to the four hour really. Okay, so we've kind of got like, I know this is really messy. I'm sorry, guys. It's I know that can be hard on the eyes sometimes 
But basically, we're kind of inside of this, uh, this big channel right here. This is a rising wedge channel. And as we've talked about, rising wedges tend to be bearish. But when the situation is bullish, they will tend to break to the upside. So if you form a rising wedge in a bull market, um, that's typically going to break to the upside. You'll break rising resistance. And that's very much what looks like gold is trying to do here, right? It, it wicked up, um, then it kind of had some consolidation here, and then it basically broke that again last week. It's retesting sort of this, uh, this what was resistance. It's kind of retesting that as support now. But, um, I mean, this chart just overall, like, this is a long-term bullish chart. This is, a, this is bullish. It could be bullish next week. We could break out for no reason. Uh, maybe it takes another month, right? It, it could be that this thing consolidates down here. But anywhere from the short time frame to the mid to the long time frame, gold is, I think, your best risk to reward play right here to make sure that you get gains. Because we, we do have concerns about the broader financial system. We do have concerns. How long can this pump really go? Um, let's take a look. Sorry to, to divert, uh, but let's take a look at the Federal Reserve um, balance sheet. Uh, those are repurchase agreements. Okay, this is the Federal Reserve balance sheet. Very long time frame. Let's zoom in. So if you remember when the whole um, the whole banking crisis happened just a couple weeks ago, balance sheet pumped, was crazy high. Everyone said, oh, my God, you know, there are bailouts in there. They restarted QE and, and yada, yada. And then I told you guys that these are 90-day loans or less. Almost all of this pump right here is going to get paid back. So that's um, that went from $8.3 to $8.7 So that looks like about $600 billion expansion on the Federal Reserve balance sheet. And uh, But that's already falling, right? As of the past two weeks, that's already coming down. So this should be expected to continue falling. I don't know if we're going to make it all the way back down here because some of the loans, some of that balance sheet expansion was, um, I think it's like $12 billion was done with a year long maturity on, on the loan. So this probably won't come back down all the way, but it should come back down most of the way. Now, a Federal Reserve balance sheet going down is kind of a bearish scenario, which is one of the reasons that I brought this out. I'm not entirely sure how to interpret this because this bump was made on the on the fear of you know banking collapse. So this this thing went up because people were afraid and the markets went down. Normally, when the balance sheet goes up, the um, you know the markets go up with it. But in this case, that that didn't really happen. The markets dropped and then they rebounded kind of back to their levels. So I'm not exactly sure you know if this is bearish or bullish or just neutral. It's probably closer to neutral than anything, but. Anyways, the balance sheet should continue to go down um, or to return back to where it was, I should say. And then gold just, I mean, gold is just ready to, like, it could break out at any moment. It doesn't have to be immediately. It doesn't have to be this week. But but I really do think that uh, that it's a good idea to get long here. Because, I mean, you can see we're basically in this sort of, was that? Yeah, get, yeah, buy more gold backs. It, you know. <laughs> and the cool thing, too, is if, if you accept gold backs for a service, then, like, you don't have to pay a spread on that at all best way to get it yeah for sure so yeah we're close like gold is now finally in this it's like this kind of final zone almost like monero had that sort of final zone or is currently um in its final zone here right this sort of uh channel right there so gold is is entering that same spot and um i mean you really you really expect this chart to end up doing something like that maybe it could come back down but i mean to me at this point it's like okay i'm holding it for the long term i don't Yes, I trade, but that's with the minority of my stack in terms of being positioned overall, which is really where I've made the most money ever, is just positioning for the long term. Gold is a very good place to be positioned for the long term uh, or the medium term as well. So, um, yeah, that's the price report today. I think um, I think we basically got to everything that was important. You guys uh, have any questions? You think, um, well, what do you, what do you, where do you think, think this gold pump is coming from obviously uh, it's it's just becoming seen as a safe haven right oh it's always been a safe haven but now more than ever right with the direction of uh where the global financial system is headed people waking up to the fact that the world is run on fiat but do you think there's potentially some energy coming from this rumor of russia china looking to create a gold backed cbdc that's possible. They've been talking about that for a long time, and it, it kind of might it might be worth addressing that. So I got into the libertarian movement back in 2007, um, and I've heard since forever about how the BRICS are creating a new gold backed currency, how the dollar is about to collapse. Um, you know, they're they're tra they're changing their bilateral trade into uh, you know out from dollars. 
Um, they're going to reject it as the world's reserve currency. I've heard this forever, but the data doesn't seem to suggest that. Now, there is a caveat there. China and Russia are already doing something like half of their trade or three quarters of their trade in the Chinese yuan or their own like sort of mutual currency swaps, something like that. Um, but that's actually a very different thing than using gold as a reserve asset for your central bank. So right now there's about, I believe it's $7 trillion. Um, maybe it's more than that. I think it's $7 trillion used um, internationally in international central banks where dollars are held as a reserve asset. So it is true that we're going to see more bilateral trade happening among the BRICS nations where they're not going to use the dollar for, for that trade. But so far, I don't see any data which suggests that the dollar is being removed as a reserve currency asset. Um, now, in terms of like the gold price and what's driving it, um, yeah, I mean, I do think that the geopolitical uncertainty is definitely a driver there. Um, gold to me is somewhat correlated to, um, to bull markets. So uh, this chart right here, we talked about maybe a month or two ago, maybe, actually it was longer than that, it was maybe three months ago, where we were looking at the NASDAQ in blue and the gold in, uh, in gold, in orange. And we were saying that gold tends to recover for the last 20 years, gold tends to recover before the NASDAQ does. So yes, sometimes it will drop. So for example, like here's 2008, gold dropped with the rest of the market, but it didn't drop as badly. And then it recovered faster, right? The, NAS the NASDAQ kept dropping in 2008, the stock market kept dropping, but gold was already recovered. Gold had already gotten back to its, um, you know, to its previous high. So gold has been kind of a leading signal in a lot of ways for a bull market and risk assets. Um, and so that's kind of what we talked about here. That was another little indication to me that we were probably looking at positive move, uh, movement for crypto and stocks was that gold was already recovering um, by the time that, uh, you know, that like January, February had come around. So um, I think it's, there's multiple things. Um, I think, you know, they do try to suppress gold. So sometimes it's like that pressure, that, that suppression of interest, like sometimes they have to let that go. Like, they can't just keep it suppressed forever because real buying and selling demand for the real physical asset is a factor there. And while they can screw around with the paper markets and, and whatnot, um, I mean, it's such a massive marketplace. There's just so much money tied up in that, um, that when real people are buying, they can't suppress it forever. But if they can control the times that that get, uh, gets released, that's a good thing. So one thing that they love to do is so like gold will, that gold suppression well, the, that pressure will have to get released and gold will start pumping. And I think that one of the mechanisms here is that um, once that happens and gold is pumping and they can't stop it, they say, OK, well, crap, let's recover the markets. Because, you know, basically from the point that the market's bottom here, the better investment is to be in the markets. And that's kind of the trick that they want to play. They want you to um, they want you to be like, well, you know, I'm going to get more return in the stock market. So let me sell my gold and buy the stock market. And they like there's just these cycles that have have gone over like the past two three decades where they they seem to do this, and I think that's the mechanism. I think that's what's happening. Um, so I think a lot of the financial insiders have recognized this pattern now. A lot of like big money, smart money knows this. Um, so they're acquiring gold. They know it's a safer asset. It's a safer place to be. But you've also got the geopolitical uncertainty. So people are also, um, you know, I've got family that um, you know they used to be kind of kind of normie and they're buying gold. They're they're not really so much into crypto, but they do like gold. So um, I think it's multiple causes, but that would be my my assessment on why that happens. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like the the big, like, you know, the BTC maxis. Maybe maybe not all of them, but I think a large part of them see Bitcoin as a gold killer, right? Not only as it being digital gold, but it's like making gold itself, uh, you know, useless, right? It's replacing That's silly. gold. But I think ironically, it may end up having the opposite effect, right? Because it's opening people's minds and uh, to the importance of why gold is important in the first place i think well, the average joe schmo never stopped to realize right they don't understand fiat but crypto is really you know ramming that message home better than the gold movement i think was ever able to do especially now with the younger generation right maybe with generations past it was more successful but right like mm -hmm. gold bugs it's when we're going like i don't know like i think most society wasn't you know paying attention to the gold bugs right you just kind of see them as black uh, that, that's a good point man yeah crypto right i mean you got you got you got teenagers trading dogecoin right yeah they might be doing it because of what elon but you know they're, they're learning the narratives they're learning why crypto is supposed to be important 
And so that that's got to lead, just end up leading more people to gold, right? Some percentage of of those people that just that makes, wake up to this that makes a lot of sense idea of fiat a scam yeah, so in some ways crypto might steal some market cap from gold but in other ways it might bring more market cap from uh from the youth from the new generations learning about monetary theory where where do you see the three ultimately sitting like in, in terms of uh how they work you know gold monero bitcoin because i mean they they are going after a lot of the same use case what's kind of your overall take there the goal uh, i think they serve sure. slightly different like they serve maybe slightly different use cases there um i mean it's nice to have something physical in your hands that's been valued for thousands of years gold is a reserve asset um it it seems to have um like some physical use like for the gold backs for example like that is kind of cool that you can just carry around gold in your hand and just exchange it physically um there is something to be said for that there's also the case to be made that um, sometimes natural disasters happen and sometimes you're not going to have access to the Internet and you're not going to be able to send your cryptocurrency. Um, I can't remember who it was, but I was reading the earthquake in Turkey. Um, his family, his town is still without Internet. I think he's here in the States or something, but his his family and his town is without Internet. So it's like cryptocurrency is going to save you during a natural disaster when when the electricity is down, when when the network is down, like. So there is a case to be made that you should have something physical in your hands that can work like cash that you don't need the Internet. Um, now, those are sure those are extreme cases. But I mean, we get natural disasters in the states as well. Like we we get all kinds of problems sometimes. Um, and then, of course, geopolitically, right, in, in the larger sense, like let's suppose the dollar does collapse. Let's suppose that there is some crazy um, geopolitical upheaval and and maybe um maybe we do lose internet connection for a period of time or maybe they do flip the uh, the internet kill switch wouldn't it be nice to have at least something else other than just fiat us dollars that we can trade uh you know on a day-to-day -day basis if we have to like take care of ourselves for <laughs> for a period of months while they're rebooting the government or whatever now I'm, i don't want them to reboot the government they can just keep it shut down but um anyways that would be kind of i think the case for why gold is like supplementary gold is important as well as crypto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I like this idea that, you know, at its, at its base layer, right, gold is even in, you know, the computing parts, the hardware that we use to produce Bitcoin and Monero, right? It's like even more base layer, which is interesting. I think um, most of it is silver, but yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe they're using gold there, now. I mean, right? they're, um, they're like... Yeah, some of the higher sensitivity sensitivity electronics. Yeah, they definitely need gold. Yeah. What? So, wh then what is your take? On like... oh, sorry, yeah. go ahead. What is what is your take on a gold back CBDC? Do you think? I mean, that that sounds like it would be something that could be extremely competitive in you know in this competition for for best money, right? Um, obviously, I think at the end of the day, a true crypto makes more sense, but. This is going, you know, if you if you have to CBDC, if you have to use a uh, state backed, you know, uh, currency to to have a, with, with a sound store of value, wouldn't you want to choose the the gold backed one, right? I feel like it could be quite competitive. Sounds like great marketing to me. Don't worry, it's, it's a good CBDC. It's gold backed, <laughs> right? But it, it is great marketing, right? Like, so I mean, do you do you think that? Do you see that marketing uh, potentially working? Do you, what's your opinion on a, a gold-backed CBDC? Do you think it's it's something that could mm. uh, compete with the U.S. dollar? Oh, you mean like the BRICS nations? Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe it could. Um, I mean, if your currency is tied to a strong store of value, then the the problem with doing that, like with having a true gold standard, where you don't print anything extra than the gold you have, you lose a lot of power as a nation. One of the big powers that um, that China, the United States has is they can just print all this currency. And instead of having to tax the people to get that money, they just print the currency so people don't really notice as much. And then they can fund all of their state terrorism, you know, goals and agendas. So I would be suspicious that that might be more of a marketing ploy and they might be like we're partially gold backed you know where they're where they're still printing a lot of money right. but you know and they just kind of make it look well, like that yeah but i guess at some point it becomes worth it for those countries to lose that ability if they're gaining the advantage of taking out 
the U.S. Uh, advantage of of having that ability over the entire world. You know what I'm saying? Like it's possible. It's it, like each individual country gets that advantage, but they're also greatly disadvantaged by the fact that the U.S. can do that and they do it on a global scale. You know. I tend to think that these guys are like frenemies. Um, they compete with power. You know, they try to become more powerful themselves, but at the same time, they'll cooperate to keep their respective populations and their own power, um, you know, preserved. So, like, for example, right. the lockdown crap was like that. The, all of the nations of the world, and they didn't even have, I don't think they have to get into a, a smoky back room and be like, hey, I know, haha, you know, as they rub their hands like a little mosquito. Like, I, I don't think that they have to get into a smoky back room. They were just like, yeah, this seems like a good deal. Let's lock down our nation too. So it's like, I think they compete, but they also work together. So I wonder if the United States dollar reserve paradigm doesn't serve these guys pretty well. So kind of like how we talked about last week on the spaces where um, yeah. the uh, like for China to, for example, for China to serve the world's demand for a reserve asset, that means that they have to become a net exporter of their currency, which means they have to print a lot of it, which tends to that would completely change their entire economic model, which is mercantilist, which is they like to export things, right? They're, they're a net exporter of a lot of stuff. Um, and if they become, if they, if they shift their monetary policy this way and they start printing all this money, that's going to be the same thing that happened in the United States when the United States dollar started getting adopted, adopted as the global reserve, where our manufacturing base got hollowed out um, and everything got cheaper to produce overseas. Um, that same thing would happen to China. So it might not really serve their interest to do that. But it might serve their interest to talk about it, you know, to saber rattle about it. Um, so that's that's kind of where I think mm. what I think is really going on there. Oh, we always this, get um, takes this, from body men. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I one thing that I learned years ago is that <laughs> one thing I learned years ago is that, um, especially when it comes to markets, if if you want to get the markets right, you constantly have to entertain the counter position. Like you might think that things are a certain way, but then you need to like stop and then actively go find the information that would contradict your thesis. Um, because if nothing else, it'll help you to refine your thesis. But often um, the counterintuitive thing in the markets is is what's really going on. Um, and a lot of times people do get led. There's like social campaigns to lead people down the wrong path because there's a lot of money to be made in, um, in sort of having the retail plebs on the wrong side of the trade. So. Here's um, the last thing I'll say about maybe the dollar here is this chart right here is the, the foreign. Um, this is what's held by foreign banks for their reserve currencies. And um, you can see that their reserves have gone down overall, but the United States dollar as a percentage has remained at 55 percent. It dropped to 54 percent here in, in Q4 2022. Now, we just finished Q1 2023, so it'll be interesting to see that data. Because I want to see real data if the United States dollar is going to be um, losing some of its reserve status, this chart right here from the IMF should show the United States dollar losing relative percentage. So maybe that doesn't happen in Q1 2023 because of this, you know, it was like just happening. But I think that at least by the end of this year, we should see real evidence of that happening. And if we don't, that tells us it's more so a news story and hype narrative than it really is like actually happening. So uh, yeah, that's Always try and back your, your claims with data. It's always tough. try and find the counterintuitive or the counter position to your own. Uh, unrelated, but I got to Did you did you read that soft uh, war book, or have you uh, looked into that at all? That guy Jason Lauer. No. Making what's that? <laughs> no, I, I haven't read it. Okay, all right. Although topic for another day. Obviously, it's a whole can of worms. All right, just just check it out. Yeah, do, do some research on it. Uh, I may try to get cool. get that guy on the show. I don't know if he'd be willing to do it. Probably, he probably wouldn't be willing. To oh, that'd be on crazy. Show, but yeah, awesome. He may, man. He may not. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so much. We're gonna jump to our special guest, which is what Mr. X. Mr. X. Yes, yeah, yeah, so, but if you could stick around a little bit, please do, because uh, I think uh, you and Mr. X chatting would be would be fun too. Uh, if you can stick. Yeah, around. that sounds like it'd be a good time. I've uh, I've read some of his stuff. He's uh, he he knows his stuff. Oh, sweet! Awesome! All right, buddy. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks so yeah, much. Yeah, we could, we could go Thanks, on for guys. days. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Matt. I had no idea. Yeah. Really. <laughs> and, I, and I don't mind so much, but Sunita is looking, <laughs> despite the clouds, still wants to go. I don't to the beach. want to go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> thank uh, you so sorry. much, buddy. Yeah.
Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Thanks, Stick guys. Stick around if you can. Stick around. Yeah. I will.